we're recording another episode of Ooh. Danny and Troy. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> we're recording. I'm a different person. Okay. Enough of that. Sit down. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> All these good. voices, Troy. I'm a man. I'm going to have to do something about them. Take a number, take a seat. <laughs> That's the way it's going to have to be from now on. You were just saying that, yeah, fireworks are almost, um, you know, happening in your mind. Uh, we've got progress happening on data logical <laughs> services. We recently made a Absolutely. job post for a creative director. And yeah, in this um, episode today as well, we've got another um, aspect or, or, or session with Drupa and creative writing experience and examples from Danny and uh, yeah I, I think the creative writing aspect is certainly for me and if yeah everybody can hear me uh, it's about using it as this kind of yeah everything's will be happening in the world whether it's um problems or challenges or exciting new projects popping up um, but yeah to use creative writing in a sense where we can set back and just relax and let things flow and uh, kind of a stress uh, relief mm -hmm. I think this is certainly why I explore creative expression and um, yeah really happy to hear another uh, section of of Danny's creative writing C section C section <laughs> the yeah and the flow that's coming around <laughs> these characters Drupa and krakens and sharks and yeah over to you danny so uh well, thank thank you troy you were doing so well i was hoping you'd go on <laughs> <clears throat> you know it's <clears throat> i've been asking myself as i do this and and you and i know that something is happening for us, um, different kinds of openings, I might say, that I believe to a large extent, because we do our creative expression <clears throat> rather freely. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I hate the idea of thinking, you know, that I have to go to, would have to go to work, you know, wear a tie, which you always thought was like a boa constrictor, yeah. Um, and sit in an office, you know, and play by somebody else's rules and be quiet on the phone and, you know, clean your cubicle. And I just don't see how people do it. I mean, I think I've been there, but I've mostly been like a territory manager or a project manager, you know, so I get to go out. And even when I was in L.A., it was like, <clears throat> here you're never in your office. And it's like, yeah, thank God. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just, I don't know what I get done sitting in a swivel chair. Sure, right? sure. It's just like, uh, I know, I'll go out. And I, I had free reign because I was the creative director and all this sort of stuff. I needed to meet interesting people. And uh, these interesting people um, did not have a regular schedule. Sure. You know, you didn't come in and punch a time clock. No. Uh, and for me, it's like, you know, when you go to work, when you take a project, let me put it this way, because I'm always working at doing something. Um, I'm working 24 seven because I have an objective to achieve, right? And I don't, don't look at the clock. I don't have anybody, you know, calling me every three minutes about when am I coming home or any of this other kind of stuff, which I love actually, you know, being this uh, footloose and fancy free. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, is a, I want to keep that aspect in the writing, because whether I can see it or not, and whether people believe it's relevant or not, I believe that everything we do is relevant. <clears throat> and as a result, you know, whether we see it or not, it's having an effect because it's part of our life. And those effects that are happening between you and me and our course of action i was going to say intercourse but that might be that might give people the wrong impression okay no i don't think so uh troy agrees with me no, i don't think so so um we just it, it cleans the palate i guess you could say right sure for the next glass of wine mm. um and with that i 
I always wonder where the next segment is coming from. Mm -hmm. And I always receive a message. And then when I try to do it on my own, which I started the third chapter and, and I entitled it Poor White Trash, um, I pushed it aside. It's like, no, I, I'm not finished yet with where the, the tale of the last chapter was. So I, in order to keep things flowing, I went back to the last chapter and added <clears throat> something that some people might disagree that it has nothing to do with the sentence before. But then again, I would ask that question of anybody's life. Right? Sure. Okay, you're eating a sandwich and the phone rings. Guess what? It's the same thing, yeah. especially if you didn't expect it or some hacker sends you a message and says, hey, I've been trying to call you, Bert. You know, where you been? And it's obviously a setup, right? Or uh -huh. Uh -huh. whatever. You know, they're endless ways yes. that people are exercising their creative impulses mm. right okay yeah let's hack the cia or, or whatever it could be anything mm -hmm. nevertheless here we go i felt and i don't really know where to start with this so i'm going to start at the end sure. and if i'm satisfied with it or it's short enough or it reveals enough about where i'm actually going i'm going to stop there <clears throat> if not i've got this script marked um previously let's see where it is here about you know i've got five asterisks and a begin here uh but then again going up and trying to find that uh is another especially when you know i'm using notes on my mm -hmm. smartphone about where it is i don't know where it is i, I have to do better than that and my toshiba is just it's a pain I, I don't like laptops anymore but i ended up with aggregates i believe mm -hmm. on the last one yes aggregates and associations <clears throat> mm -hmm. and just not to have taken this trip in vain this section of drupa uh, is called the omen as we know true drupa is uh, seeking waiting for or as we say in the script crying for a vision okay so here we go okay the walking trees of burnham wood a forest near dunsinane hill in scotland it features prominently in the tragedy macbeth by william shakespeare in the play three witches reveal to macbeth his fate through prophecies they suggest that he will be King of Scotland when Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. He was like an erect tree with reverse rooting, his brain enclosed in a knot, obviously for protection, like a burl in the airborne structure of an obviously confused invertible. He was the head or canopy of the walking tree, an upside down walking tree with two trunks erect about the root ball. Two other branches extended from the trunk just below the crown of the canopy that looked like a nub that he had that had been healed over somewhat from storm damage. No doubt the root mass extended within the nub, which made it a curious root ball indeed. There was evidence that his foot roots or toes and the branches of an upper two branches or limbs with their more agile roots known as fingers had extended much before being deprived of what it took to make them structures in and of themselves, upon which a double trunk was to emerge and rejoin with one much smaller root, limb, or nub, and its smaller yet burrows or knots that were now fruiting bodies, much like the sugar maples of the north that needed no tapping. Both curious limbs were obviously 
failed evolutionary mutations that had adapted themselves to be a little like a Venus flytrap that were sensitive to touch and would close around objects that triggered such actions through the hairs upon them. Obviously, both toes and fingers had adapted to root, but that process was ended long before they were complete. As to the upper extremities, you could see for yourself, the roots were negatively geotropic. The thing of it was, the three witches that he hadn't counted on, they were easy to identify, however. The first one and most definite was Chris that he met in college. The second was Allison in Hollywood. The third, third was Yelena or Lena for short. There were, of course, many others for sure. It seemed that was all he attracted. Some were more efficient than others. There was Regina, Mary, Alona, Nina, uh, perhaps even his mother. Hell, there were hundreds, black and white, the magicians, I mean. All of them were assuredly the double, double boil and trouble as promised. How to identify a witch, one may ask. And there I stopped, uh, principally because this salvation, uh, I feel like justifies this rampant rant that Drupal is going through, mm -hmm. you know, where he's telling himself impossible situations like a forest walking. And if you know anything about that play, because it's not, even in the theater, nobody says the word of mm -hmm. the name of the play or the king because it's mm -hmm. extremely bad luck. Uh -huh. But the quote, you know, of three crazy girls mm -hmm. or three sane girls, however you want to look at it, um, predicted in a myth, mysterious and mystical way about a forest walking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so in a lot of ways, you know, his metaphorical thinking is in a sense, justified by a Shakespearean play. Okay. So, you know, it, it, it really looks like there has to be a key to put all of this together. Mm -hmm. And you and I have spoken about um, how the audience, and I think I would be applauded for this if I were still in theatrical circles, of creating something that may not be popular at first uh, because it seems difficult and nobody reads anymore, right? But these kinds of things pop up out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Benjamin Button. I think I mentioned earlier, you know, I had submitted the play, that screenplay, mm -hmm. to an agent in San Francisco uh, and then never got back to me, but then the script appeared in Hollywood and somebody mm -hmm. rewrote it and hired, who was it, uh, Johnny Depp, to play the role? Okay. And it was like, okay, you got to be careful about doing that. Mm -hmm. How do you protect yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And it works doubly on the other side as well. So I think that somewhere in everybody's creative expression is a story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in the editorial phase, which we have not touched on at all, I might say, mm -hmm. you know, you can clean that kind of stuff up. I think sure. you talked about it yesterday in your um, uh, comparison of, of details, uh, also known as data, and That's... how they all get cleaned up, yeah. whether you're doing your job as a data scientist, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a data analyst, which might mm -hmm. we might also call an editor, right? Sure. Well... And to make this kind of story, which we really won't know until we reach the end. You know, mm -hmm. because at that point in time, 27 lines before the end of the page, mm -hmm. we, we come to a conclusion. But in uh, the meantime, I've encouraged people and myself, I don't care if you write it a hundred times, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Don't cut number 99. That's mm -hmm. not your job. Keep mm -hmm. doing it because the effect of doing it over and over and over again somehow symbolizes some dynamic mm -hmm. of what you are saying, even if you're not quite sure what you are saying in a larger context 
because you've got to get it all out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And once it's all out, going back and editing things is clearing things up. Yeah. Right? Which is something you might do, you know, in, in any part of your day. Sure. You know, you can make a phone call and say, you know, I don't think you understood what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, but somehow or another, everything gets configured and figured out and uh, we go on. Yeah. And I think really, to a large extent, uh, my own catharsis uh, in writing this <clears throat> is dealing with, therapeutically dealing with uh, issues of my own search for things. Because, you know, what I think the saying is that every piece of writing is autobiographical. Okay. Because it's coming from you. Right. Unless you want to, you know, steal it from the New York Times or whatever, which, mm-hmm. you know, not, not that great a publication, I don't think. Um, I always pictured the New York Times as like a watch on a chain, you know, going back and front and forth okay. in front of people's right. eyes. Right. And it's like, no, nah, give me that squirt bottle. And so, you know, it's a long process. And it, if, for, if for no other reason, it marks my time, your time, in time. Mm -hmm. and space Mm -hmm. um as a cathartic getting it all out effort yeah without mistakes because there's like miss mcgregor said there is no such thing as a mistake or an accident exactly right it's all part of part of everything else yeah that's how i see it as well and yeah going back to the analogy of data science or the process i should say of data science and what I see we're in this data collection phase and you can't say, you know, I'm not going to accept this data because, you know, if you start doing that, you're in the editing phase. My process that I use in data science is collect the data, organize the data, package the data and deliver the data. So there's four Mm. steps, um, which, yeah, which, in, no matter what scale of data science project or what industry or what tools you're using, there'll be always those four aspects. And yeah, what I think we're talking about is starting to organize and that's relating to editing. So when we get to there, we have to organize this data and there may be things that, you know, I, I can see already where we're, we've touched on, um, aspects uh, that could really so whenever we talk about drupa and his adventures and you know his musings and what's going on i'd like to put all those pieces together and then we've got other aspects of um yeah almost personal life experiences coming from you and i can see those kind of being um organized together once we organize them together we package it in a video and we could then say hey this is the uh, finished product, or this is a version of Danny's, um, an outcome of Danny's creative writing experience and example. And I can see, um, yeah, that being, and then when we come, to, that's a way of delivering it, saying, you know, this, if you want to look at every, um, all the videos, they're there as well, but here's a, a packaged version of the creative writing experience focusing on <laughs> Drukpa's um, appearances that he made in the, in the um, yeah, process of that flow of information, that data that came down and was recorded. Right. And, you know, it's, it's vitally important <clears throat> that one establish, allow, and approve of that flow. That's right. Um, right. You know, I mean, it's like you can't throw a rock in the river and expect it to dam it up without, you know, understanding that that river either has to flow around it, over it, under it, you know, yep. um, and you may actually need a spillway, right? Sure. If it starts flooding and creating a, a lake or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, the, the beauty of things is that we're in constant change and that should give, I think, um, a great deal of respect to impulse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you don't follow that impulse, 
you're going to miss it. You're going to miss something. Right? Sure. It doesn't mean uh, that it's going to end the world, right? It just no. means it, it could be uh, an unexpected way <clears throat> that reveals something that your, I don't know, present way of thinking does not reveal, right? So I think it's very important. And, and also, you know, speaking about the forthcoming, I don't know how soon <laughs> or how long, uh, the editing phase it will be before the editing phase begins. But, you know, it's, it's a little bit like what, what, what I'm writing about, a little bit like building a house, right? And even though this piece has qu quite a documentary flavor, um, asking the auditor or the viewer to uh, allow it, It would be like, in some sense, where we are now, you're building a house and the documentary, even though it could be, is always, almost always commented on, would be like filming the contractors who could even go to the brick factory, you know, when they mix the, the mortar for the bricks. I mean, if, but it, nevertheless, it's all part of the process, you know, what the county says about drilling, what kind of water you get and, you know, ad infinitum all the little details mm -hmm. but um that's that's kind of what a book is not i'm not comparing myself uh to writing a book even though i believe that's what i'm writing but i don't think it will come clear until i've finished you know uh, what it is i'm doing and then we can make that assessment sure so <clears throat> respect for <clears throat> the contractor you know the guy who finishes doing the plumbing and we don't stop the camera there. Mm -hmm. We get in his truck, we follow him home. He has an argument with his wife. He kicks the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, he decides to go out with the boys and have a beer. He runs into a tree. He has to make another, you know, uh, arrangement for another truck all to be on work at work on time the next morning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you take all of that, and it's like building a sandcastle, right? Each one of those little grains of sand sure. has its own life, its own shape. It's like a snowflake, right? Yes. And, you know, it's all part of the finished product. Yes. And if you are one, you can always skip it. You know, nobody says you have to read every word. Or if, like right. I said earlier, if, you know, you're tired of Borodino and the battle with Napoleon, well, just skip it. You know, get on to the love scene or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And then you can go back later if you want to. That's that's the wonderful flexibility without having to, you know, uh, what is it? I forget even forget the word. Uh, you know, when you're sliding, you know, yeah, or swipe. or swipe. That's it. Yeah. Swiping. You know, it, it's not that at all. I mean, there's something warm and cozy about a book, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That burns at Fahrenheit. What? That name of that book, right? Fahrenheit. 421, was that it? Remember that book? No. What's that? Yeah, that was Fahrenheit 4, 451. I forget the, the exact title. Yeah. But that's the that's the um, temperature at which paper burns. Right. Right? What was that? Right. Fahrenheit 451? It's here. Yeah, Fahrenheit 451. 451. Is a 1953 dystopian novel by American writer ray bradbury right One i think bradbury had something to do with star trek too didn't he a fantastic writer okay and you know that that book just came out of my you know mental storage mm -hmm. i hadn't heard about it in a long time but it was kind of a 1984 you know brave new world kind of right. piece of literature yeah and i would be lots of times i when i look at films on youtube and I see that they offer how this film was made. Mm -hmm. So behind the scenes, you know, exactly. and they're talking to all the people, you know, that's part of part of it. Yes. And someone saw the merit of the director and the producer sitting down with the cinematographer and talking about all the details. That's, you know, not necessarily the movie we watch, mm -hmm. but it has a great deal of interest to a lot of people, myself, exactly. you know, being one of them. Yeah. And uh, just you know, I can't watch a movie anymore without thinking how they did that. 
Sure. You know, the, other, the plot has to be pretty clear, and it has to be a movie, obviously, I think, that I can watch repeatedly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because there are too few movies that you know we can see time and time again. Yeah. Right? The What is it? The Butler and the Baroness. Uh, wonderful film mm-hmm. with William Powell. And so there are few. There are not so many. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. uh, that yes. tell a story without... It's like... Um, that film about a guy who's actually wealthy, who's living in landfill in, in Manhattan. And as part of a, a game, one of the girls comes looking, their two sisters, one of them comes looking for um, a, a man who's not wanted, an unwanted man during the Depression. And they choose William Powell. Right? And then the story begins that way of mm-hmm. how he an unwanted man. And he says a speech where he says, the, the, the guy who's running the show says, um, what makes you think you're an unwanted man? He says, because nobody wants me. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, that's how he feels. He can't get a job, even though he doesn't need one, mm-hmm. but he's going to live in the landfill with their other guys who end up in the, at the end of the story being waiters in his restaurant that he builds on that site. You know, so it's full of things that are totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I think there are other movies like that, uh, The Wonderful Adventure with Cary Grant, where, you know, people who are bored with life principally say, you know what, I'm not taking any money with me. I'm going out. I'm leaving this town and I'm just going to walk that way and see what happens. And I always thought that would have, I even suggested it to my brother's kids because I don't have kids. They said when they graduate from high school, very important, not to go directly into college, right? Mm -hmm. Then he's like cookie cutters. And Mm -hmm. I said, tell tell William and John, no credit cards. Give them a hundred bucks and say, I'll see you in a year. Mm -hmm. And they use their wits. And I said, and by the way, the only objective is to circumnavigate the globe. And you're not going to do that with a hundred bucks, you know, whether you're working on working your way across the Pacific on a cattle boat or whatever it is you do <laughs> that. And that is what, had I known what I know today that I would have required of myself yeah, to come back at that point in time and know a little bit about what the hell life is about, <laughs> as opposed to saying, well, I'm going to be a doctor. So I'm going to go to, you know, undergrad school. And it's like, you know what you're beginning there? You're beginning undergrad, you're doing grad, you're doing internship, you're doing, you know, your whole, you'll be able to uh, maybe make a payment on the loan that the government is giving you to be a doctor by the time, I don't know, 35. Yeah. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. by God, don't marry in that time and have children, which is what my grandfather in Germany did. You know, we had a long, long line of, of physicians and he married, he met Charlotta. And Charlotta, which I think he was recon for a Red Baron, and he crashed in France and met this French girl named Charlotta mm-hmm. and got married and had to get out of med school. And he became a famous uh, dental surgeon, but his father disowned him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, son, what son? And that kind of stuff happened. You know, people actually took that seriously. Mm-hmm. And we ask ourselves today, uh, how could he do that? Or that's what they did, right? Mm. And where's the merit of it today? Because we don't know what we're doing. Morality is shot. You know? And and this, I think, may be a key moment for Drupa when he recalls his adventures, even though I didn't list Marsha's name as one of the witches, um, changed the man's life. Okay. And who knows outside of just being you know, a, a, a baby maker, uh, there's a person in there, right? Sure. That has guidance, suggestions, uh, influ- influence of one nature or another uh, mm-hmm. that molds us into the people we are today, like it or not. Sure. So I think that's one of the benefits too, not only in rehashing mine and other people, well, it's autobiographical, right? Okay, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's about my life principally Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and trying to make sense out of it. Right. And hopefully by the end, we, myself especially, will understand what the hell it's been about. 
well right? yeah and can convey some worthwhile message to other people who uh chance to read it mm -hmm. so yeah talking about you know the making of the movies typically you know they release the movie first and then as a kind of preliminary after people see it and, you know excited about it they say oh here is a new um chapter the making of is a really interesting one they um the shining uh, that was uh. you know, the making of that movie uh yeah about um getting behind the scenes and you know but you don't want to kind of see it first because it shows you you know um the actors uh what, what was his name in the shining uh was that um, his uh, jack nicholson's jack nicholson yeah course. the way he he would go into character it's they, johnny <laughs> that's right so it's a really scary movie really when you think about it i mean it's yeah, yeah supernatural and everything about that but and um but then getting behind the scenes they showed one part of it, him getting into character and then he's yeah and then you know getting out of character so when you see that it's you don't you're not inside the movie anymore you're kind of outside and observing so you don't want to see that before you actually see the full movie but what i see we're doing right now is we're doing the making of like you said mm. it, it, there will be this um you know aspect of the what we're coming to in a nice packaged and delivered um movie book story um you know insights information messages that will you know be there at the end or you know some time in the future we're actually showing the making of while we're producing it which is really kind of fun and interesting that you know we don't know what's going to be the punchline what's going to happen in the end what is going to be the theme or the messages that um are, are taken um or promoted until you know we get further down the process of collecting mm -hmm. data organizing it packaging and delivering but it it's not to say that or just yeah that we're not doing that at the moment because we are taking the data we organizing a very raw matter we're packaging in youtube and we're delivering it through our networks of connections. So it's not that we haven't started. It's just the intensity that we, you know, focus on. You, you bring up a very important point <clears throat> because people are always asking, <clears throat> um, where do I begin? And I used to mm -hmm. say, uh, anywhere. Sure. Right? Because yep. what's happening is, it's a compilation, right? Yes. And you're right. We're starting in the middle. Start anywhere. Mm -hmm. And if we start, we don't know we're starting in the middle because we're starting anywhere. Mm -hmm. But then we may find a point, and probably in some cases, we get to a point that leads us back to the beginning. Sure. I've, in, I've um, inferred that in, in previous uh, sessions with you is that it'll all come out in the wash. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so don't let the whole idea of how do I start this story begin? Mm -hmm. You know, you can start it with, I was born, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or something that feels good. It doesn't matter because it's going to change. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. And if you don't change it, your, pub your editor will or your publisher will or, you know, anybody can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've seen books that have pages torn out of them. I burned a book in my fireplace in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I think it was like I was heavy into Judaism at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was the title of the book was something like, and ye shall be as gods. Right. You know, so I was, you know, on this whole spiritual kick and fighting between growing up as a Christian and then uh, exploring Judaism <clears throat> and, you know, everything. I didn't stop there. It just kept going on. It's still going on. Yeah, I, I dumped Zazen with Drukpa. It's like, I can't sit still. 
that's not going to work for me. You know, like, no, sit still, man, and think of nothing. It's like, I'm sorry, but I'm not Joe Biden. Can't do that. Right? <laughs> I understand the old man has COVID now. Oh, really? I didn't know that. But yeah. Yeah, I tell you, I think sometimes I think uh, even the Democratic Party has realized that neither the president nor the vice president are worth anything. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, in the United States, we have all kinds of theories, right? Mm -hmm. conspiracy theories sure if uh, joe biden doesn't suddenly die you know they've got uh -oh. the perfect excuse now right uh, he's what 80 a bad 80 years old or something like that not doing well and he's got covid and you know so you're going to have you know a kind of stalin's bodyguard come in one night and go <laughs> you know or, or much more silently than that you know the pillow over the face or whatever and then of course they hire the right pathologists come in and say, oh, he choked on a ham sandwich, like Mama Cass, right? Give me that sandwich, you know, or they'll dispose of Kennedy's body, you know, and give false reports and all the stuff they do, which is another intrigue. Yeah. But, uh, you know, today I smelled it. Right. I was like, oh, man, he's on his way out because he, okay. he's, he, he's not going to be in a position to promote you know, war with Russia through mm. Ukraine as his mm. proxy war. You know, he's not even mm -hmm. there anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they'll put somebody else in his place. Mm. Yeah. Like Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. who'll yell at you all day long <laughs> mm -hmm. in her, what is it, what do they call it? Word salad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what did she say? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a lottery, you know, you you spin the balls around, you pull the words out, and you read them uh -huh, one at a uh -huh, time. Uh -huh. And then it's supposed to make sense. It's like, well, what did she say? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Which is kind of what Drupa is doing, right? What did uh -huh. he say? What the hell is that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But Kamala, don't worry. We have an editor lined up for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you get to read off the teleprompter, just like Joe. <laughs> well, funny. maybe they'll, uh, Obama will do a white face, right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And going to be Joe Biden. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. It's, it's in, I don't know. It's, yeah, happening, but it's kind of almost so absurd that it's really difficult to believe that it's happening. These things that, yeah, that are coming out. And, um, but anyway, yeah, we're doing our thing. So I think we, uh, that's important. We, uh, is just to get on with our stuff and yeah, but be, um, I think ultimately it, data logical services and what we're looking at in terms of creative expression, giving people an option to kind of start again or step away, creating new worlds, <laughs> creating new communities, being able to be decentralized and not in power or controlled by these monopolies and global community, global kind of um, deep state. Yeah, that the, the in hoots with mainstream media and you know these um, global companies and this yeah connection with governments that are handing doing things behind the scenes to just, it seems it's all about business when we talk about um, what's going on with the wars and that it just seems like it's just a big weapons trade. They just want to make money by selling weapons. So they're inventing these wars or things or problems so they can keep the money coming. So this, yeah, it's crazy. I see what the situation is right now, but it's also good to work on alternatives to give um, aspects of uh, new communities, new <clears throat> people being able to talk freely and creative expression, creative writing yeah. is a, a part yeah, Whatever to comes that. to your mind. Exactly. Right? And it, it could be like New York or LA where if you're talking and people don't have any interest in it, they'll just start talking about something else. Yeah. I right, think, just right in the middle, and you're going, what, what happened? What what happened? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like nobody will tell you, you know, it, what you were talking about wasn't interesting. They'll do that in LA. Okay. I'm sorry, it wasn't yeah, interesting. That's yeah. where I think there's a, an awakening or a movement or initiatives that are coming up that is realizing, you know. I'm sorry, Troy, but what you're saying is not interesting. 
<laughs> Sorry, I had to yeah. do that. <laughs> Go ahead. They're waking up to that fact that, you know, it's it's not really the game they want to play. We've referred to Monopoly as, you know, an analogy <clears throat> and the rules being so tight and the, the major players on that board are just controlling the show. And people are realizing, I think, that, you know, they don't have to keep playing that same boring game that um, is only benefiting or it seems to be benefiting these major players without yeah <clears throat> considering individuals and yeah, yeah new communities that want yeah. to be however they want to be they should be able to have their own rules live by them you know set them um if that's what that community likes it's and um yeah, yeah each to their own yeah. Yeah, if it could only be that way, you know, if, if we didn't have so many, I think Trump would call them regulations, right? Yeah. We, we would have people, you know, starting a bar without yeah. having to have, you know, three bathrooms, wheelchair right. access, right. you know, and all that other stuff that, yeah. like, okay, I understand it, but, you know, 100 years from now, nobody will be doing that anyway, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, do your thing. And of course, you know, within reason, there would probably be the, somebody in town or in the district that would come in and say, hey, you can't serve roadkill, man. That's, that's not right. Right. Mm -hmm. said, but people love it, man. Mm -hmm. Do you tell them it's roadkill? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> it's like, God, I got a great roadkill joke for you. There's two guys walking down the road, hot, you know, bad day. And uh, they, one of the one of them stops and says, "By some roadkill," and he says, "Hey man, let's eat." And the guy says, "No, I, I'll wait for a hot meal." So he says, "He's there. He's sitting there eating the dog or the possum or whatever it is." And then he goes down the road a little bit fur further, and he says, "You know, I'm still hungry." And there's another roadkill, man. I'm, you want some of it? And the guy says, "No, no, no. I, I'll wait for a hot meal." And he says, "Okay." So they go on down the road a little bit more. You know, it's hot, and you can see the the steam coming up from the road and the guy just throws up, you know, and the other guy says, see, I told you I was going to wait for a hot meal. Oh, gross. I didn't tell that correctly because that, you know, I, I was having questions about whether I should continue or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah okay. Me. Yeah, they did that on Jackass for real, where they... Oh, did they really? A vomit omelette, they called it, where oh, the guy bar. just... Yeah, ate all these vegetables and like six eggs, and then it came up onto oh. a frying pan, and then someone ate it. <laughs> but, okay, I can I understand how disgusting what I just said was. Okay, but other people are doing it too. Okay, sure. All right, fine. Yeah, but the other right, thing then. I wanted to just quickly yeah. talk about um, there's sure. you said like giving a hundred dollars in traveling around the world. There's a, a YouTuber right. called Ryan Trahin who recently did a um, similar thing. You've traveled from the West Coast to the East Coast on one penny. So he oh, was. Oh, really? Yeah. He, and he, over 30 days, he gave himself this goal of 30 days. He had to travel from yeah one side to the other of America. And he started with one penny and he, you know, took the penny and he bought a pen with it. And then he you know, he's got, got a dollar for that pen, and then he went and um, yeah bought some water and sold the water for two dollars, and then you know he got um, different ways of making money, and he travelled from one end of um, America to the other. What and a story! I, yeah, I'd love to do that in terms of a, a hundred dollars. Walk out of the door, try and circum. Um, vent the whole world so you go from one um yeah country to the next on a hundred dollars would be an interesting uh adventure. not a penny <laughs> well he's the, he's the <laughs> penny guy we need to do something else he Me, might be doing that know, next anyway I, I would i wouldn't take any money i'd take my credit card <laughs> yeah right that's right yeah well that's safety net right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay that's good all righty then all right um so we we call it a day yeah it's... okay and tomorrow 
You'll send me a list, right, of these people. On, yep. Please, on an email. Uh, it's the yep. only, only way my, I'm not, I don't have a data scientist brain. You know? Sure. I've, You're my I'm brain. File, oh, we've got the data coming yeah. in. I'll organize it, package and deliver through an email. Yeah, you might actually be editing this group, but who knows? We'll see. Sure. We'll see. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank Danny. you, sir. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.